All right, good evening, everybody. I'd like to call the 20, 2020 Cavendish Town Meeting to order. I'm Michael Ripley. I'll be your moderator tonight. Please rise and stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I'd like to let them both speak now so they can make other meetings. There are no objections. Um, I believe there was a cost to toss of a point. Anne Marie won. Hi, I'm Anne Marie Christensen, your state representative. I'm in Montpelier. Anne Marie, I don't believe the mic's on. I'll turn it on the bottom. On the bottom, there's a switch. Small. 
We did increase the minimum wage, though, for two years only. Um, the governor vetoed that bill, and we successfully overrode it with not a vote to spare. Um, the House also passed Act 250 reform. Um, I know there was a lot of back and forth. They were talking about taking away the district missions, and a lot of people thought that was a loss of a lot of local control. So they put the district commissions back in, so that hierarchy goes the same. But there's a lot of um, things in there that are looking at sustainability of our planet. Like when, when somebody does build a house, that it's weatherized and, and meets certain standards on the weatherization factor. Um, it's looking at our wildlife corridors so that they're continuous. The deer can travel from one end of the state to the other without being disrupted by somebody's house in the middle of, of, the, of the wildlife area. So usually they'll put the house more toward the edge of the wildlife area. So there's a lot of things on that. Um, we also passed the Global Warming Solutions Act. You know, there's not a carbon tax, but um, this, we don't have a road map to the future. Um, Governor Scott said when the United States got out of the climate agreement as a whole, as a country, there were a number of states, and, and Governor Scott said we were one of them who would try to abide by those standards. So this um, act by the House, which all these go over to the Senate, um, it sets up a roadmap for action. You know, we have to do this, meet these emission standards by such and such a date, and it just sort of so the committee will be formed. Um, the governor is going to be in charge of forming that committee. And then I think the last thing is on the coronavirus, which seems to be everybody seems to be talking about it. If you try to find hand sanitizer or masks, you won't find them. They're mostly sold out already. So you know a lot of people are, this is on their mind. Um, the governor on Thursday um, set up an emergency management committee, um, and this is going to do contingency plans just in case something happens. Um, it spreads very rapidly. It's usually not fatal unless you're older um, or have some pre-existing condition, but this emergency plan is going to look at things like, suppose people have to work from home, suppose schools have to close, you know, just so that we're not caught unawares that there'll be a plan in place. Um, you know, large groups, gatherings may be stopped and stuff like that for a while, and basically <coughs> isolating in place for two weeks or so. Um, but for right now, we don't have coronavirus in Vermont. We have it in New Hampshire and all the states around us. But um, uh, the only advice is wash your hands. You know, it's sort of a wash your hands all the time. And it seems such a simple thing, but it's, it is a pretty major thing, so. That's about it. I'll be in the hall. I have 10 meeting reports with my contact information. Um, Cavendish is usually not shy about emailing me or calling me and thanking me or telling me what I've done wrong. So um, um, continue doing that, that's great. And, um, and I'll be in the hall for a few minutes afterwards. Yes? Yeah, Carl Snyder, I'd like to ask you a question. We see you once a year over here. Why don't you come over here more often and talk to us and find out how we feel about some of these things you're working on up there and take our input back to them instead of just deciding on your own what you're going to do? Well, I don't decide on my own what to do. What I... you're going to do when you vote. Pardon me? What you're going to do when you vote. When I vote, I usually also, like the cannabis bill passed, I voted against that. The House voted for it. That, I got a number of emails from local constituents who would say, vote for it, vote against it, this is why, I'll call them back, I'll talk to them. I seem, I'm in Montpelier all week, and I pretty much have a constant, people call me, leave a message, I call them back. Um, it's, it's kind of hard during the year just to set up a town meeting, but I'll take that in, I'll take that into consideration.
Thank you. Good point. Uh, I think that's a, it's a, it's a terrific point. It's a, it's a hard thing. I'm Allison Clarkson. I have the honor of representing uh, you in the state senate, and along with Alice Nitka and Dick McCormick. And it's great to be here tonight. And it is, it, it is a challenge when you don't live in a community to come. And I try and take advantage of as many invitations to come and be in the 26 communities we represent. But it is a challenge, and it would be wonderful to have more reasons and uh, create some experiences to come to Cavendish and chat. Uh, I represent you, it, it, but I have to say, town meeting is a, is a great one, and I'm very grateful to be able to speak because we are partners, the states and the municipalities. We're partners in how we uh, improve the lives of Vermonters and how we address the issues that we're all facing together. And we uh, obviously address them in different capacities, but we work together and we're partners together. Uh, I serve you as Vice Chair of Senate Economic Development, Housing and General Affairs uh, in the morning and in the afternoon I serve on government operations. And uh, one of the, the, this is one of the things I treasure about town meeting and, I, and one of the challenges about being in the Senate not being able to be at your own town meeting all day uh, is it's just the most direct form of democracy that I think is experienced practically in America. And to that end, the U.S. News and World Report two weeks ago just named Vermont the fifth best state in the country to live in. So whatever challenge we, challenges we address tonight or that we face together, we are considered by the rest of the country to be in pretty fine shape, weighted heavily in terms of education and health care. So here we have Margo. I urge you to look at Margo's great report she did on the coronavirus just for Cavendish. So how wonderful that a community member took the time to do that just for your community. Um, in uh, Senate, so I, anyway, we need to applaud ourselves because I think that's kind of, kind of a great thing that we were just named uh, that. Uh, the, in uh, Senate Economic Development, we're doing a lot of incenting. We're in, trying to incent housing. We desperately need more workforce and affordable housing. My 94-year-old mother has just moved to Woodstock and she already has noticed that most of the people who work at the terrace don't live in Woodstock. How I wish they could. We could build 300 rental units tomorrow in Woodstock. So housing is the, the biggest bill we're working on at the moment. And to that end, we are uh, addressing Act 250 and reforming its regulations and trying to encourage density, building density in our downtowns and village centers and encouraging those that have been designated to actually grow out and develop neighborhood development areas close in and around. And if you do so, we will reduce the duplicative uh, permitting in water and wastewater. So that is what, that's actually a fairly big uh, Act 250 reform and there are several others that if you're a designated downtown or neighborhood development area, you will be able to take advantage of. Uh, in economic development, again, we're incenting, uh, trying to focus on recruiting new and former Vermonters uh, and filling thousands of jobs. We have about 8,000 jobs in Vermont now that are unfilled. So we need to develop, work hard on upskilling people, on, on getting skills after they finish high school. We're hoping to double our apprenticeship programs uh, this year, which would be terrific uh, because we have great success in keeping young Vermonters here in Vermont if they do their apprenticeship programs and internships here in Vermont. Um, and one of the things I'm most pleased about is we're really taking on student debt, which is a monkey on a lot of people's backs, uh, and also on parents' backs, not just on students. And we're addressing that. We have four measures in which we're addressing that, everything from driving them to purchase homes and opportunity zones to creating an employer benefit. So we're, uh, we're doing all sorts of interesting things, incenting the things we want to have happen in this state. And in government operations, we addre we're addressing the crisis facing our EMS departments. Uh, we're creating a pilot to encourage more regionalization in our public safety sector, in police, EMS, and in fire. And uh, we're increasing our uniform. We're really working hard to improve and adopt more uniform licensing so that we can have uh, people who are licensed in other states come more easily into Vermont without having to go through, begin at the beginning. 
um, and we're doing that particularly for our military, uh, honoring the military credentials and doing things like the Nurses Compact. Uh, as you heard from Anne Marie, we have a huge shortage that we're facing in nursing, uh, and actually in, in several medical uh, areas. And uh, we are, we've just passed a big criminal, Anne Marie spoke about the minimum wage and uh, marijuana and Act 250 and uh, the Global Warming Solutions Act, which are coming back to the Senate, all those things. Some of them began in the Senate and are coming back and some are just beginning. Uh, but we just sent to the House a fairly major criminal justice reform bill, which we uh, hope will, they will take up, which aims, is aimed at reducing our prison population by about 10% and reinvesting those savings in transitional housing and treatment uh, and in actually in, in early childhood education, because if we can prevent and build great citizens from the start, we uh, spend a lot less of your taxpayer dollars. So it is, and makes for less trauma, which is a huge cost to our state. Trauma alone is a huge cost to this state. So we're, uh, we, we love having you come and visit. We wish more of you would come up and take a day, if you're able, and, uh, and come up to the State House to follow things you're interested in. Um, I know a lot of you must be interested in some of the things we're working on, and you wouldn't be here looking at what you're focusing on in this town. Anyway, thank you so much. Uh, we look forward to continuing to work together on solving the challenges we face. Um, but remember always that the rest of the world thinks we're the fifth best state in the world to live in, so that, in the states to live in, so that's pretty great. Thank you very much, and we'll be in the hall for a minute. Thank you. Do you want me to leave it on? Yeah. Okay. Please. All right, and if I could for a couple of minutes, I'd like to go over some basic reminders and rules about tonight. Um, remember, we, have, we meet here tonight in the Civil Assembly as a community in a tradition that is older than our state itself. We meet to come together to make decisions about our community. As we deliberate, please let us advocate for our positions, but not at the expense of our neighbors. Please don't make accusations or refer to somebody in a negative way. Let us remember there is an immense gap between saying, I am right, and I believe I am right. Let us remember that our neighbors with whom we disagree with are good people who think differently than we do. Let us remember that in the end, caring for each other is of far greater importance than any differences we may have. As your moderator, I'm here to accomplish, help you accomplish the business you intend to do. I'm here to facilitate the discussion. Please speak to me after you've been recognized and please make sure you use the microphone. We have two different types of articles on the, on the warning. There are those that are done by Australian ballot and those that will just make decisions about tonight. For those that are done by Australian ballot, I will read them. I will ask if there's any discussions or questions. We cannot make any motions, we cannot make any amendments or take any action on them tonight. We will do that tomorrow when we vote. On the other articles, I will read the article and ask what is your pleasure. At this point, I will need somebody to make a motion to accept the article. And then I will need a second. If you would please, to help out Mrs. McNamara, stand up and state your name. You don't have to use the microphone when you make the motion. And the person who does the second, please also stand up and state your name. It's just easier for her to take notes. After that, I will read the article again and then the article will be open for debate and amendment. Please raise your hand and wait for me to point to you to speak. Wait for the microphone. Make sure you state your name and then speak your mind. If you have any questions for another person, please ask them through me. When you speak tonight, you have to speak to me. If you have spoken on a motion and you raise your hand again to speak again, I may wait to call on you until I get everybody else. Remember, you're allowed to speak twice on any one motion. Motions can have amendments, one at a time, and amendments can have amendments, which are also one at a time. Voting. Well, most of it, I will ask for a, vote, for a voice vote. I'll ask for those of you who approve to say aye, for those of you who oppose to say nay. If we need to, we'll do a division of the house, which means you will either raise your hand or stand. We'll do this if one person calls for a division of the house 
or if we need a two-thirds majority on a motion. If there is a request from several, seven voters, we will do a paper ballot. Please also remember that only registered voters can speak and vote. If you are not a registered voter, please respect that you cannot vote or take part in the discussion. If you feel I have ruled improperly on something, please tell me. You have the right to challenge my rulings, and we also have the right, as long as we're not breaking the law, to let the body decide how we will proceed on something. We can amend Robert's Rules of Order if we wish to, so let me know if you think I made a mistake. Also, we have several members of this group who have a lot of history about the town and information and that others may find pertinent. Although Robert's Rules of Order state that no one can speak more than twice on any question put before this body, I would like to ask that unless anyone objects to suspend that rule, as long as I've given everybody else a chance to speak, I'd like to let people speak more than once if they feel like they have pertinent information. Does anybody object to that? Hearing no objections, we will do that. Are there any people here for the first time? Well then welcome back everybody. And if we could, I'd like to continue what we started last year and have a moment of silence for those town people that have none uh, passed on and are not with us anymore. Thank you. Let's get started. Fred, can you do me a favor and turn the microphone? Yeah. Okay. So the warning for the annual town meeting of March 2nd and 3rd, 2020. <coughs> The legal voters of the town of Cavendish and Windsor County are hereby notified and warned to meet at the Cavendish Town Elementary School in Proctorsville, Vermont at 7 o'clock Monday evening, the second day of March 2020, and at the Proctorsville Fire Station at 10 o'clock in the forenoon on Tuesday the third day of March 2020 to transact the following business. On Tuesday, March 3rd, 2020, by Australian ballot, which the polls open at 10 and close at 7, Article 1 to elect town officers for the ensuing year. This is done by Australian ballot, and then there's a list in the back of your book of what the ballot may look like. Are there any questions or discussion about that? If you look in the back of the book, you'll notice there's a lot of blank spaces. If anybody would like to volunteer for search positions, please feel free to speak up. Hearing nothing, I'll move on to Article 2. Article 2, shall the voters of the town of Cavendish adopt the town plan and approve by the Cavendish Board of Selectmen on November 12, 2019? Again, it's by Australian ballot. Does anybody have any questions about the town plan? Then we will proceed to Article 3, which we will be starting with tonight at 7 o'clock, to see if the voters will accept the town report. What is your pleasure? I make a motion that we accept the town report as written. I need a second. Second. We actually have um, some corrections we'd like to make. I have three corrections. <coughs> Maybe four. Thanks. On page two, elected officials. Under selectmen, we should have George Timko appointed with an expiration term of 2020. Library trustees, Janelle Wilfong's term should be 2024. And under Justice of the Peace, I don't know why, we just can't seem to let go of Barbara Dickey. We keep putting her in the book, um, but she is not a Justice of the Peace. Stuart Lindbergh is. And then the last correction is under Vitals, which is page 56. And I want to correct under burial certificates. Um, <laughs> down towards the bottom where it says Charles F. Kalenda. 
That is Charlene Kalenda, and um, we've corrected that. We're going to correct that in the copies that we keep in our files for historical purposes. So if you would write that in your book and change that, I'd appreciate it. And we apologize for that error. Is there any other discussion? So. I'd like to have one more change made on page 10. Chairman of the board, Robert W. Glidden. Uh, his son. Oh, yeah. We need a second to these uh, amendments. Oh, yes. Well, our corrections amendments. My understanding is, is if, if the person who made the motion accepts that they're friendly amendments and don't need to be uh, voted on, if they're if otherwise they have to be motions to amend the record and then and then voted on separately. I make a motion to mm -hmm. Oh, Mark and Mark and I'll make the motion to accept the town report with the changes. Thank you. I'll second that. Thank you. <clears throat> Any other discussion about Article Three? Hearing no other discussion, I'm ready to call the question. Article 3 to see if the voters will accept the town report. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those, in favor, all those opposed say nay. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes do have it. The motion is carried. Article 4. It's always my favorite. <laughs> To see if the town will vote to collect all taxes on real and personal property, which it has that statutory taxing authority in installments. Taxes collected by the town are to be paid to the treasurer on August 15th, November 15th, February 15th, and May 15th, with interest of 1% per month added to any tax principal balances due and not paid by the quarterly due date. The final due date for all tax principal balances is the 15th day of June, after which they shall become delinquent and are subject to an 8% penalty in addition to the interest. If a payment due date falls upon a day that the treasurer office is officially closed, payments then due will be accepted without penalty or interest added if received by 4.30 p.m. the next business day. Amounts allocated to current year taxes under the State of Vermont's Homestead Property Tax Income Sensitivity Program shall be applied to the taxpayer's property tax installments pro rata. Total additional Total adjustment divided equally between all quarterly installments in accordance with 32 DSA. What is your pleasure? Sir? Neil Snyder, I'll move Article 4 as published. I need a second. Second. George. So Article 4 has been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, I'll call the question. Are you ready for the question? <laughs> question is Article 4, to see if the town will vote to collect all taxes on real personal property for which it has statutory taxing authority and installments. Taxes collected by the town will be paid to the treasurer on August 15th, November 15th, February 15th, and May 15th, with interest of 1% per month added to any tax principal balances due and not paid by the quarterly due date. The final due date for all tax principal balances is on the 15th day of June, after which they shall become delinquent and are subject 
to an 8% penalty in addition to the interest. If a payment due date falls upon a day that the treasurer office is officially closed, payments then due will be accepted without penalty or interest added if received by 4.30 p.m. the next business day. Amounts allocated to the current year taxes under the state's state of Vermont's homestead property tax income sensitivity program shall be applied to the taxpayer's property tax installments pro rata. Total adjustments divided equally between all quarterly installments in accordance with 32 BSA. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed say nay. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes do have it. And the motion, the article passes. <laughs> article 5. Will the voters adopt the fiscal year 2020-2021 town budget as proposed by the selectmen? What is your play? I'll second. Thank you, Fred. Article 5 is removed and seconded, which reads, will the voters adopt the fiscal year 2020-2021 town budget as proposed by the selectmen? Any discussion? No questions, comments, concerns, no discussion? Are you ready for the question? Question is Article 5. Will the voters adopt the fiscal year 2021, oh sorry, 2020 2021 town budget as proposed by the selectmen? All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed say nay. The ayes appear to have it, the ayes do have it, and we've passed another article. Article 6. Will the voters authorize the Board of Selectmen to set a tax rate sufficient to support the fiscal year 2020-2021 budget, as well as the veterans exemption and local agreement shortfall? What is your pleasure? I make a motion we authorize the select board to do that. We need a second. I'll second it. So motion has been made and seconded of Article 6. Will the voters authorize the Board of Selectmen to set a tax rate sufficient to support the fiscal year 2020-2021 budget as well as the Ventures example, exemption and local agreement shortfall? Any discussion? This has got to be a record. Harry <laughs> 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 Nono, call the question. Are you ready for the question? The question is Article 6. Will the voters authorize the Board of Selectmen to set a tax rate sufficient to support the fiscal year 2020 2021 budget, as well as the veterans exemption and local agreement shortfall? All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed say nay. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes do have it. Article 7 is to transact any other business legal and proper when met. Does anybody have anything else? Ralph? Uh, Martha and I would like to make a brief presentation about the uh, status of affairs with the Cavity Streetscape Committee. Okay. Martha? Go oh, ahead, please. Hi, my name is Martha Mott. Oh, yes. My name is Martha Mott. I'm 
My name is Martha Mott, and I'm one of the members of the Cavendish Streetscapes. Uh, I'm Rolf Van Scheich, and I'm also a member of the Cavendish Streetscapes Committee. And we just want to let you know what's going on in town and who we are. Um, we did speak last year, but things have, um, we've done a lot more this year. We're a group of local citizens who want to do things to beautify our town. It's that simple. Um, we're independent of the town and we use no town funds. What we do, we meet each month to reflect on what has worked, what hasn't worked. We create goals and make plans for projects. We do flag installation and maintenance, budgeting, fundraising, grant writing, and we promote uh, Cavendish streetscapes, and we designate work crews. Now, what have we done? So all the flags you've seen around town, um, it's been a really a group effort, not just um, those of us on the committee, a big range of people. So in February, we formulated the organizational bylaws for governance of the committee, including but not limited to membership and the method of electing a board of directors and offices. <laughs> So we've kind of put things together so that we have a real group here and it really means something. Um, in March, we created a mission statement and this is our mission for the town. Undertaking volunteer-led community initiatives to beautify our shared spaces and instill pride in our community. Um, we've held conversations throughout the year about the Old Town Garage site and what we can do to improve that. Well, you want to take that? Yes, uh, one of our projects uh, that we are planning on for this year is to uh, have a uh, site drainage and grading plan developed by a landscape architect, uh, probably none other than our own Tim Calabrese. Um, and following that, we will uh, take steps to implement that plan. Uh, one of the things that needs to be done is to restore the water service to the uh, Cavendish Historical Society building. And at the same time, we also would propose to add a fire uh, for, or a frost-free hydrant for eventual plant watering. Uh, we plan to topsoil the site, seed and mulch it, uh, so that it looks less like a war zone than it does at this time. For the longer term, uh, we will work with the Cavendish Board of Selectmen and the community to relocate the existing pole barns and the storage areas in back of the, the site, uh, so that all of that road equipment can be uh, gathered together at the site of the present town garage. Uh, we think that will appear, uh, improve the appearance of the site and also allow us to do more in the way of creating a park there in the longer term. But for the immediate future, we'd just like to dress it up and get some grass growing there. Martha? I have a question. Rob, what about the hazardous waste investigation? Well, I think that's, that's a back burner issue, Steve, at this time. Uh, there is some thought that there may be some, some undesirable materials there, but we think that it's, it's at this time not justifiable to go on, on a massive and very costly exploration there. What is there will stay there, and uh, that's why we don't propose doing anything more extensive than regrading the site, taking care of the drainage, and, and seeding and mulching it. But it's a good question. Uh, there's apparently, you know, for a long time, uh, there was coal ash dumped at the back the end of the site. And there's some concern that the town garage over the years uh, dumped waste oil there and what have you. So, uh, but, but on closer examination, it was, was evident that it would be very, very costly to, to undertake just a, a site survey there, you know, to determine what, if any, hazardous materials exist there. So at the present time, we don't consider it a threat to any of the adjoining properties, uh, and uh, we believe it's the wisest thing to do is to proceed as we plan. So that's one thing. The other things we're doing, um, we do spring work, so we clean up around the town park, we do raking, weeding, mulching, planting. Uh, planters were hung on the gazebo, and new whiskey barrels were put up over by the gazebo as well. By Memorial Day, the flags were up in Proctorsville with the help of the Proctorsville Fire Department. Um, that's the second year we've done that. And for the first year, we did it in Cavendish with the help of the Cavendish Fire Department. And I want to say we have a really good time with these fire departments. They are awesome. Um, and they work together with us really well, and they do the bulk of the work. Uh, we just kind of hand them the flags. <laughs> we get the fun part and get to ride on the fire engine. Um, we have very much enjoyed the excellent help from both departments, and we have a good time. 
Um, acknowledgement pla plaque was completed and um, I think it's placed in the town hall. Correct, Julia? Thank you. Um, with planting and meeting continued throughout the summer and also watering those plants. And you can put them in, but they also need to drink. So we have some dedicated individuals who are willing to do that for us in the summertime. A magnolia tree was planted in Vaunt Park. Uh, a fundraiser at Murdoch's. Thank you, ATN and Pang. We had a lot of fun there too, and a lot of uh, townspeople came together that don't normally see each other anymore if you don't have kids in school or other places to get, gather. So we really enjoyed that. And um, Murdoch's donated some of that money from that night to us as well. It was a good take for us uh, for don't, um, fundraising. <clears throat> November, the flags came down after Veterans Day. Again, thanks to the fire department crews who were very patient with us. Um, also, holiday lights went up in Sebec Park with the help of LP Plumbing. Um, Roxy, are you here? No, Roxy and Al had a lot to do with that, and we appreciate that. So the tree and the lights around the gazebo were done. Um, and Cavendish Streets, Streetscapes Facebook and email were started. So you can find us on Facebook under Cavendish Streetscapes. We had a little holiday party at the gazebo with cookies, caroling, and tree lighting, and we hope to do that next year, too. We'll do a better job at getting the word out. We're still pretty new at doing that as well. Um, so, oh, we had some challenges. Flags. You want to talk about that, Will? Yeah, well, uh, in our town, uh, the utility poles are quite a bit closer to the travel portion of the highway than they are in some of the other communities. And it's a learning curve to find out what works and what doesn't. So, in some instances, we've already removed the flag sockets from the poles where they're simply too close to the highway and the bypassing trucks rip them down. And uh, so anyway, we've identified other areas where they simply don't work. Uh, that's the bottom line. Uh, we've explored raising them up higher. That creates problems. The utility companies are not happy about placing them higher up because they interfere with their work. So we'll, we'll have to make new with a few of the flags. But I'd like to take this opportunity also to, to uh, express our gratitude for the CCCA support. We are a committee of the CCCA, and they make it possible for us to, among other things, be a, a tax-exempt, nonprofit, charitable organization. So thank you, CCCA, for doing that. Um, also, upcoming, here are some goals that we have. We want to put in park benches. Um, also flags on Depot Street once the bridge has been completed. Uh, again, like Ralph was telling you, the town garage site planning, that may take a while. And there's a tree project going on at Civec Park. Do you want to yes, I, I, uh, Tim just told me that uh, they're getting ready to start pruning uh, the trees in the Civec Park. And I, my understanding is, Tim, that the town is going to use its chipper to chip up the, the, uh, the pruned limbs and, and what have you. Uh, trees grow willy-nilly and of course the branches go out seeking the light and at some point in order to preserve them and to, to maintain the function of the trees, uh, it's important to prune them and we're getting to that stage now. I want to go backwards on two things. One, flags. If you find a flag that is down, please don't bring it to the town office. Please do bring it to the town library. Again, the town office has nothing to do with this and we don't want to burden them with some of this stuff that we plan to do. Um, so do bring it to the library. Kata has said she'd welcome the flags there and then we'll pick them up. Or if you know any of us on the committee, um, just let us know. Could committee members please stand up, whoever has done work with us, CCCA too, if you want to. Just so you know who your neighbors are, who are part of this, and you can have a chat with them if you need to. Julia, Mary, thank you, <laughs> Robin. Um, and others too, Dora Setti is one, uh, Carolyn Sultanitsin, Forgetting uh, Bruce McEnany, yeah, yeah. and more. More. And more. And yes. thank everybody for their support. Yes. Um, one other thing. Our need, or two other things. Needs. Worker bees. If you want to be part of this, maybe you um, don't want to do any of the planning, but perhaps you're really good at fundraising or helping with spring cleaning or watering flowers or any other things that we don't even know we need yet, and you just want to be part of this and you just want to do it every once in a while. Just let us know. We'd be happy to sign you up. Over there on the counter, there is a sign-up sheet and also a contact sheet. You know how to get in touch with us. It's a, and a few pictures of what we've done. Um, money, we're always looking for donations, which is great. 
The acknowledgement plaque I was talking about a little earlier that Julia created that's up in the town office is people donate money to, for a flag sometimes in honor of somebody else. So we put those names on a list so that they are formally honored. Um, and the last thing I want to say is gratitude. Like Ralph was saying, thank you to the many who've helped this, like the Cavendish and Proctorsville Fire Departments, Cavendish Library, Cavendish Community Conservation Association, Cavendish Community Fund, uh, Cavendish Town Elementary School allows us to meet there and we've done some projects there. Cavendish Town Office, Calabrese Landscaping, Ludlow Rotary has helped, uh, Murdoch's Restaurant, and the steady and vibrant leadership of Doris Eddy and Ralph Van Schaik and many community members who have worked diligently or donated money. Um, and we appreciate your comments too. If you have any comments or ideas, please come to us. Thank you. Does anybody else have anything they'd like to bring up? <laughs> Rob. I'm going to make this brief. I'd like to say that um, the CCCA has been a host to a number of organizations that have taken a life of their own, including the Cavendish Community Fund, the Energy Committee that became then part of the Town Committee, and now Streetscapes. It has adopted and some have taken off on their own, um, like the Cavendish Community Fund, but we saw ourselves as an umbrella organization that could help things come to life. So I think it's fantastic what's happening with streetscapes. Um, we, I'm primarily involved with the Conservation Committee, and one of the big things that we're doing is, um, is actually Eric Krasnowskis, who's not here tonight, and Peter Van Scheip are working on a trail. Peter's been working on it for a very long time, and it's called the Hardy Hill Trail, and he wants it to be, I'm bending over because, maybe I can tip that out. And um, anyway, it's a, it's, a, it's a huge project, it's a wonderful project, and um, he's going to be leading um, some guided tours uh, you can see a heron rookery from this trail. Peter's an incredible botanist, so he will point out wild orchids and such, and animal tracks, etc. And he's going to be leading a few trails this summer. And I've left a sign-up sheet here if anybody would like to be contacted when those hikes happen. Um, you can also, I mean, we'll, we'll try to get the word out, and also and you can find it on our website. There's also a newsletter there that has all that information as well as some other projects. One of them is, we're gonna have a presentation on the 20th of uh, next month regarding pesticides, the use of pesticides and herbicides and safe alternatives. Um, that'll happen in the town office. So, um, and, and Claire did a fantastic presentation here this winter with uh, raptors for the kids, right? Anyway. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you Robin. Anybody else have anything? Uh, I just wanted to uh, ask and make clear that uh, tomorrow is the presidential primary also. Some people weren't aware. Of we are all part of Super Tuesday. So okay. we'll be voting on several things tomorrow when you hit the town the Proctorsville Fire Department, so don't think it's going to be a quick in and out. There are probably several sheets you're handed. Hearing nothing else, before we adjourn, we do have a non-binding resolution we need to discuss. This was put on by a petition of a group of citizens who got the required greater than 5% of the eligible voters to sign it. Rather than approve it or not approve it at a select board level, we agreed to have it discussed here tonight. You should have all received a handout as you walked in tonight. If you haven't read it yet, you might want to take a couple of minutes now to read it. And then we can have a discussion. Mr. Moderator, can I speak to this from the board? Can we step away from the board and speak as a citizen? Anybody else?
else need one? My motivation for presenting this uh, this evening is uh, at present there's 18 uh, uh, anti-gun pieces of legislation moving through the House and the Senate. And, uh, Stu, Stu. Yes. stay closer to the mic. Oh, okay. You're not coming across, sorry. All right. Uh, at present, there's 18 pieces of legislation in the Vermont House and Senate uh, that are, are infringing upon the rights of gun owners uh, in Article 16 of the Second Amendment of the United States Constitution. Uh, Vermont is this, the third safest state in the nation, and uh, it was the second safest state in the nation until Governor Phil Scott uh, signed the, the, the uh, gun safety bill two years ago. So what I'll do is I'll read the resolution. Uh, the resolution reads, the Township of Cavendish hereby declares itself to be a Second Amendment and Article 16 constitutional gun ownership township, as defined herein. The town hereby recognizes the inalienable rights of all persons within its boundaries to keep and bear arms as described by both Article 16 of the Vermont Constitution and the Second Amendment of the Constitution of the United States of America, including, but not limited to, the lawful use of firearms in defense of life, liberty, and property, and in defense of the state from all enemies, foreign and domestic, the safe and responsible use of firearms for hunting and utilitarian purposes, and the safe and responsible use of firearms for sporting purposes, including Olympic sports. Furthermore, per Marbury versus Madison, 1803, the township hereby declares all federal and state laws and regulations attempting to restrict these rights to be infringements, hence null and void under this resolution. So, then I'll ask the question. Shall the legal voters of Cavendish adopt the fo that following resolution, a resolution for the defense of the right to keep and bear arms? Before we get any further into discussion, I'd like to have a motion in a second. I'll so move. Second. Take it back, second. So we have the resolution for the defense of the right to keep and bear arms. Any discussion? Sir? Um, you need to use the microphone. Yeah, you, you gotta use the microphone. Oh. It's easier for Diane. Does it specify what kind of arms? Bazookas, are they okay? But bazookas, can I speak? Certainly. Uh, bazookas are already quite illegal and uh, this isn't advocating for anybody using a bazooka. Okay, but, but uh, what, what kind of arms? I mean, it's a pretty general state. I mean, is it machine guns? M machine guns are also already, Ill well, they're not illegal, but the permitting process is extensive and they're extremely expensive and hard to acquire. But they're not, they're not prohibited. Uh, they're restricted heavily. I okay. mean, you have to go through, a, through a, 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 a very difficult background process. I mean, there's a thorough investigation. Anybody who wants to own a machine gun legally has to go through a full FBI background check. You have, to, you, have, you have to open up your house to the ATF and allow them to come in at any time to look at those weapons. Okay, it, is an AR-15 a machine gun? No, an AR-15 is not a machine gun. And those would be permitted? Oh, yeah. Thank you. I believe the resolution is in defense of the Second Amendment. So are you saying it's seven? Sorry, Ralph raised his hand. I can't. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. <coughs> I'm not about to engage against the uh, use of or possession of firearms. It is, as said, an inalienable right. But I speak as a person who had an older brother who was shot to death at his place of work some number of years ago in Cambridge, Massachusetts. And he was shot to death by a recovering heroin uh, addict who was having, as you might guess, severe emotional experiences and what happened. So what I would say in this context is if you see something, say something, if you don't think that it, it's right. So people who are troubled, and it's, it's one of the things that is so difficult in legislating these issues, is 
where you draw the line. At some point, who makes the determination that somebody is not sufficiently responsible to carry firearms? Uh, and and I, I urge everyone here to think about that. And if they have thoughts, constructive ideas about how to to affect the responsible, and that's a key word in your resolution, Stu, and I'm very glad it's there, the responsible use and possession of firearms. Uh, if you have relatives or friends or acquaintances who show signs of instability that is potentially threatening, do something about it. Thank you. Jim. Yes, so if somebody believes in reasonable gun control, so if somebody believes in reasonable gun control, then should they vote no for this? That's a hard question. I mean, I, I, what's your definition of reasonable? I mean, this my, my statement here is this pretty clear. I mean, uh, responsible use of a firearm. Well, that's also questionable. It's like, what is responsible? But we all know what responsible gun control, we've talked about it. I'm not sure whether, this is a debate for that, but people should think about that when they vote for this. Rob. I'm not on any kind of, I don't know who to address. You can face the body, that's fine. It's not easy to be actually talk, you know? So I, I, when, you, when I first saw this proposal, I really saw it as an invitation to a, de a real democratic discussion because people can have very different <laughs> ideas and the idea is that we can express them to each other, right? And I need to tell you that's not him. I That's okay. This is, this is the debate the board had. We didn't want to just pass okay. this resolution or not pass the resolution. We want to be able to have a discussion here tonight about it. So a civil discussion. My, my, um, as I was thinking about this, and I thought about it a lot, I felt like the bottom line was safety. Like everybody wants to feel safe. And it's not just, you know, hunting for guns for hunting, but it's guns for safety purposes. And, um, I, I just feel that there's such instability right now, um, and there's, there's such a, a volatile climate, and we just have to look around and see what's happened in other communities. Um, really, the horrible, the horrible heartache and the loss of lives. I mean, I, it's just, it's so <coughs> shocking to me, and I, I really think, I don't know again, like, legislating or how that would be legislated, but having, having back, having some kind of, background check, some way to make it safer for us. And I, I really, so I have, I think there should be some kind of gun control. And again, I don't, I don't know how to go about that, um, but I do feel strongly, I, I do feel strongly about that. And I wanted to say that to the community. Margaret. <coughs> My background is in public health. I come from Baltimore, Maryland, which has some of the highest homicide rates in the, in the country. Is more gun control going to stop things there? It hasn't. What has worked in Baltimore, has worked in Chicago, is working in third world countries and where there is extreme violence, is a simple program called Pure Violence. It was started by an infectious disease physician and my background is public health, as I said, and so I was extraordinarily fascinated by this model. In the places where they instituted that in my hometown of Baltimore, all violence, not just gun violence, rape, for all forms of homicide, stabbings, poisonings, all of that dropped to zero. If we want to control violence, we as a community have to look, as Roth pointed out, he lost his brother in a horrible manner. If we want to stop violence, it has to be all violence, and we've got to work together, and if we want to do it, let's bring a cure violence program into this community. I'm a mentor for the simple reason that I know that makes a difference in whether a kid does something that I 
think it's unbelievable when you see there was a situation in California where certain people, this, this young man who had severe mental illness, he stabbed two people to death and he shot two people to death. Everybody ignored the stabbings. We want to stop violence and there is a way to do it. And we have to decide as a community, we want to do it. There's no quick fixes here. There's no quick fixes here. And we need to understand that. And the more legislation you pass doesn't necessarily mean you're going to get to the end. You're just going to tick off more people. So if we want to do it, I'm happy to work with anybody that wants to bring a cure violence program to this town. I'd be happy to work on it with you. Thank you, Marvel. Sir. I don't think there's anything that could be worse than a shooting in a school or something like that. If you go back to the one in Connecticut, the kid that did that was mentally disturbed. He killed his mother. He took the key to her gun safe, opened it, took a legally bought firearm, and killed those kids in Sandy Hook. You go down to the Florida, where the school down there, the guy that did that, the FBI had him in, his, in their hands twice. Walked right through it. Didn't do a damn thing to it. You come right back to the point Right now, the Second Amendment gives you the right to own and bear arms. Like the gentleman said here, if you see somebody that you don't think is right, like what happened right up here in Fairhaven, it's time to speak up. But that doesn't mean that you have to punish everybody else that lives around you, or do they have to be punished because they can't handle, or they don't handle, the cases as those two I just pointed out. I don't condone it. I think it's a hell of a tragedy. But I don't think it's right to penal everybody that walks the straight and narrow. Thank you. say one thing just to, I just want to reassure everybody. Go ahead, please. Uh, I own firearms, and they're all owned legally, and if I want to purchase a firearm, I have to go through an, an FBI, I think it's an NCIS background check. If I don't pass that, I don't buy the firearm. I don't get it. I mean, I'm done. And there is also, there's been talk about a gun show loophole. I've never been to a gun show that allows for you to buy a firearm without going to that through that check, you have to go through that check. So there there are laws on the books that exist to protect the public from people that are bad players. The people in the gun community were not a bunch of violent, crazed thugs, despite the depiction. Uh, you know, any kind of tragedy like Sandy Hook is, uh, is horrific. I mean, it's just terrible. Um, on the, on the other side of it, I have two daughters. You know, I've been told, and I've read this, that one in four young women are, are assaulted physically in their lifetime. My daughters probably won't get any dates now, but they're all ours, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and they're training. And uh, you know, they, they, they go through the training uh, you know, with me and with instructors. And, uh, you know, we, everything's locked in the house, and. You know, they know where to access them if there's a problem. And uh, I, you know, with, a, with a, anywhere from a 20 to a 45 minute delay in a police response, you know, all the way from Rockingham, our girls need to protect themselves. I'm not there all of the time. And uh, I mean, it's, 
it's, a, it, it's an important right to me for, to, to allow them to, you know, have that sense of safety. That's all I have to say on it. George. Um, <coughs> Looking at this, the only thing is, I don't really um, see the need or the reason to have a resolution like this because we have the Second Amendment, we have these things. Uh, this seems to come out of a very, I don't know if it's, uh, you know, a fearful place, but. Um, I just don't see the reason that we should, you know, label the town in this manner. There's, um, you know, we might as well have revolution, resolutions to, uh, you know, that we, we won't have slaves or one person, one vote. I mean, it's where it's where we're at. We have an issue to deal with. But looking at this, it doesn't, I just don't see why we need this. That's on my But I just want to follow, I just want to follow that by saying, by agreeing to this, we're giving a nod to the state to say that all federal and state laws and regulations attempting to restrict these rights to be infringements and hence null and void. So I'm not sure as part of this town that I want to say my town agrees to all of this. It's me again. I really think that what they're asking for is for a very simple, easy way to let people know that we are against taking away something that is legally handed to us in the Constitution. I don't feel it would be, this would be any more important than me or them to say, you can't write articles about the government anymore. You can't stand up and voice your opinion anymore. I think this is just as sacred as that is. I think when it gets to the point that a man legally licensed, you might have read about it, shot and killed a man in a church in Texas. He was the first one to get his gun out and legally shoot the guy. The guy had just shot two and was on the, in the process of shooting some more. And he was called a hero in Texas. But one of our unnamed candidates said he was not a hero, he had no right to have a gun, he had no right to make that decision. I, I think this fella probably wanted to see him shoot three or four more without, be, without being able to stop. And a long time ago, 20, 25 years ago, I saw a bumper sticker that said, when guns are outlawed, only outlaws will have guns, and I firmly believe it. Wendy. The Constitution. Yep, just hold it up closer. The, the Constitution <laughs> Amendment 2 actually says a well regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state. The right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. They weren't talking about semi-automatic rifles back in 1789. They weren't talking about people who could shoot down masses of people with one touch of a gun. They were, they were in a situation where the country was rather wild and they didn't have people around, they didn't have the law and order um, officers around to protect them. They had to protect themselves. I read every day in the papers about another killing 
not just someone shooting a husband or a wife, or, but someone going into an office, a, a shopping mall, a, a, a place of business, and shooting because they're angry. We're all angry these days. It's a very, very hard place to be in. Uh, you know, I, I think of what you say, Stu, about your, your, your daughters knowing where the guns are. What if in the age they are, and I'm not using your daughters as specifically, but youngsters who know how to use guns, and you know how teenagers are. They just get angry over something. And having that ability to get those guns and go out and do some damage to people, even though they know what they're supposed to do, there are people around who don't care when they get angry and they react. They don't think they react. And why we have the schools, all of these schools are locked down because there are people that we are afraid of are going to come and do damage to our kids. And I'm afraid that any other resolutions for our town to allow more guns to be available is very, very dangerous. Um, behind you, said, uh, Stu, Amy. <laughs> Uh, my name is Amy Perry. I live in Rochesterville. Uh, we also are gun owners and sportsmen enthusiasts, enthusiasts. I can certainly understand the, the fear behind having guns readily available to our youth, whether they're angry or not, to other adults when they're angry. Ultimately, what we're talking about with this resolution, it's not introducing more guns. It's not introducing more violence. It's protecting the rights that we've been granted and speaking for ourselves, giving ourselves a voice, saying we are opposed to losing those rights. Those are our rights. I had so many thoughts while I was listening to other people speak. And I've tried really hard throughout the gun debate to see both sides of this. Ultimately, what it comes down to is it is our right. Those of us that are responsible should have that right. There are laws and background checks in place. So if anyone thinks that there aren't background checks or that we need background checks, I encourage you to do your homework because those things are in place. Ultimately, the laws that are being introduced, the bills that are being introduced are only punishing the law-abiding gun owners. I would support gun laws that would effectively take guns out of the hands of criminals, but I've yet to see any of those. I would like to thank Stu for bringing this article forward. I am absolutely 100% in support of it. Because it doesn't really bind us, but it does give us a voice. It says, our community overall supports the rights that have been granted to us. Anybody? Oh. Oh. Claire. Sorry. My name is Claire Walker. I'm not a gun owner, um, but I have two sons that own guns. Um, I have some problems with the way this is written, though. I don't like the, you know, I, I support people having guns for hunting, um, but I think the second paragraph that says the, you know, that any laws that get passed, I, I enforce them in anti-gun laws. And you want to you want to infringe on though you you think those are infringements and you want to call them null and void I I don't get that and then up here you've got something about calling Cavendish a gun owner township I I certainly don't want to live in a gun owner township I love this community the way it is it's friendly and happy and I don't like the fact that we would write something like this and that's all I have to say. okay. Uh, 
Uh, yeah, my name is Neil Snyder. <coughs> I am a gun owner. Uh, I did buy a gun at a gun show, and I did have to pass back and check. But there's several things tonight that, you know, kind of bothered me the wrong way. Uh, first of all, when the Second Amendment to the Constitution was written, it didn't say anything about military-grade weapons versus civilian-grade weapons. It said we're allowed to, to bear arms. And we we're, were allowed to bear arms to defend ourselves against, uh, what to say, internal and external uh, threats. Well, the internal, well, the threats that come to us that we might be required to bear arms or defend, they're going to have military-grade weapons. Um, we know in the past that before our police departments <coughs> Uh, we're given military-grade weapons that uh, the police departments were often outgunned uh, when they went to uh, get criminals, uh, which, which is why the federal government uh, gave them some military-grade weapons. <coughs> uh, <coughs> somebody mentioned uh, the AR-15. AR-15 is not a military-grade weapon. It's a civilian copy of a military-grade weapon. The uh, AR-15 does not fire um, automatic fire. does not fire multiple shots in one round. There's no selector on it. <coughs> the AR-15 is a gun that is very versatile. For instance, it has a uh, adjustable stock on it. So, for instance, rifle I could use, uh, Stu could use the same one. Whereas uh, <coughs> other type rifles don't have that adjustable stock. Uh, it's a very popular gun, which is why it's used in a lot of shootings. But if you consider say the AR-15 compared to uh, a Ruger ranch rifle, 223 ranch rifle, they both shoot the same ammunition, they both take large magazines, and <clears throat> they both have automatic, not full automatic, but automatic fire. For most AR-15s have a 16-inch uh, barrel, whereas I believe the uh, Ranch rifle has an 18 inch barrel, which means the ranch rifle actually has more killing power than an AR-15 because of a longer barrel is a higher bullet velocity. I may be wrong on those numbers, but someone can tell me later. So, in short, why would we have this resolution? I think the resolution is just a merely a way to tell our representatives in Montpelier that we don't support a bunch of gun regulations that really have no, no advantage um, to creating safety. That you could just punish the gun owners who want to own their guns. We notice if you look overseas, uh, for instance, London doesn't have guns. They have knife attacks instead. Uh, France, Germany, I think one of their hot buttons is to drive trucks through crowds. Uh, you go into the third world countries, their choice of weapons is bombs. So you can get with the guns, then you're going to have to regulate trucks and knives, and you're going to have to regulate bombs. So anyhow, I'll get off of here. Let's pass out the chance. Mr. Gross. Thank you. Since Neil had so many problems with the microphone, I just want to read uh, two, I want to read one thing and say one thing. Article 16 of the Vermont Constitution is not the well-organized militia or well-maintained militia of the Second Amendment. It's that the people have a right to bear arms for the defense of themselves and the state. And as standing armies in time of peace are dangerous to liberty, they ought not to be kept. 
and that the military should be kept under strict subordination to and governed by the civil power. It is the height of power and privilege to fully trust the government, to trust that, oh, when the police officer pulls me over, he's my friend and he's going to treat me de decently. It is the height of power and privilege to think that, oh, we don't need to take responsibility for our own selves because we can just trust the, the government to take care of us. And as for me, I, I would uh, second Margo's uh, request for a paper ballot, and if there are five other people, we can we'll, have to, we'll get to that in a minute when everybody's through saying their piece. <clears throat> So, Stu, like you, uh, my father taught all of us five kids to use guns responsibly. Uh, my husband's an avid hunter. So we have guns in our home, however, um, and we know how to use them responsibly. But I'm not sure still why we need this resolution in our town. Could you tell me in a short version why we need this? It's simply an affirmation. Uh, to, to existing law. Uh, we have a problem in Virginia, those of us that believe in liberty, where the governor proposed gun confiscation and the people outside of Fairfax County, uh, the rural areas, decided that they, their gun rights were important. And there are similar bills up in the legislature that are being proposed that could make somebody like me a felon uh, for just having a, you know, a certain type of firearm. Uh, and their resistance or their public dissatisfaction has been vented uh, by creating sanctuary counties. And what we're trying to do in Vermont, myself, some of my liberty-loving friends, are to uh, make people aware of what our rights are. A lot of people don't understand very much about the Second Amendment or even the First Amendment. Um, so. Like I said before, it's just an emphatic statement to many of our representatives who, who also don't seem to understand uh, how important this is to us. Uh, I, I hope that answers your question. Hey. We did have some. Oh, Steve. Thank you. I can kind of see that this is a losing argument for, for against any sort of um, firearms. But let me ask you this. If, if we're, if we're going to become known as the town that is uh, amenable to all kinds of firearms, and would it be better if we became known as the town that protected and looked after its elderly? Would we be, would we be the town, would it be better if we were the town that, that, that welcomed people in, that tried to create jobs so our young people aren't leaving. So our elderly people have a place to live. All I'm saying is, as a statement about our community, is that something we want to be known for? And that's why I'm, I'm questioning whether we really need it. What I would like to see is some statements about the community, about who we truly are, and what we value in our community. And there are many more things that I think we can value in terms of taking care of people, taking care of each other, than, than, a, than, a, than a resolution about firearms. And, and that's what I have to say. I mean, I, I, Can I speak? Okay, I'm Linda Nasserino, if you don't know who I am. I, I feel like I need to stand for what I believe, even if other people don't feel the way I do. I don't own a gun. My husband owns guns, and I wish he didn't. But um, I, I, I don't. I, I can understand the argument with the people who are on the other side. I understand how they feel. But I do also agree with people who say that they don't want our town to stand for something like that. And I agree because I think it might encourage people to want to live here that maybe wouldn't use guns responsibly because they want to have them. Um, but I, I do. Uh, think that the idea of having some kind of a program to help stop violence would be a good idea and that would be a wonderful thing for our town to be known for and I agree with a lot of these other um, 
ideas that would be good for our town to be known for, but not for the, the town that has guns. Thank you. Okay. Seth. Hello, uh, Seth Perry. I'm your ex-constable that was in this town for, I think I covered for nine years. I've seen what comes through town from other areas. I have seen how far out VSP is. As you heard my wife, all my kids know how to use my weapons and they will protect the house and themselves. It is an hour wait for a VSP trooper to get here. I've had a transient come to my house and try to force his way in that everyone in this town has complained about. So, you cannot like them, that's your choice. This resolution is for our town to tell our legislator, who left already, that we don't agree with any new laws. We have a second amendment, and we have a 16th amendment to the state, which allows us, as authorized people to own and possess them properly and we want them to follow their oath of office and follow what they were elected to do to vote for us and follow their oath all this does is tell them that the mass majority of this town wants them to follow the Constitution of the state and the Fed. That's it. We did have two people who asked, so I'll ask for a show of hands. I need at least seven people who want a paper ballot. I believe that's at least seven. Okay. I believe we're ready for the vote. Just a quick explanation, if you vote yes or aye, it's your voting to adopt the resolution for the defense of the right to keep and bear arms. If you vote no or nay, and you're voting not to adopt that resolution. Well, I'll give it the ladies a couple minutes to get set up. To do the, if they vote yes or, or nay, aye, that they're voting to adopt the resolution as they vote nay or no, they're voting not to adopt the resolution. And while they're setting up and while we're waiting for others to vote and while we're standing in line, don't forget that I believe it was Streetscapes who brought us the food tonight. Yes, thank if you would like to go over and get some food, that would be great. And just another quick, before we get all set up for that, at the end of the night after we adjourn, um, the maintenance staff has asked us not, not to try to put the chairs in the, in the, con in the uh, containers and slide them underneath because we make a mess. They asked us just to stand them up against the wall over there on the left in the back and they would appreciate that and that that would be great. Okay, so let's give the ladies a couple minutes. We'll get set up for the paper vote and then we'll vote. <laughs>
Okay, if you will, we have the results of the voting. With 64 people voting, there were 31 that voted to adopt the resolution and 33 that voted not to. The resolution doesn't pass. It was a good discussion. Thank you all. That is all of our business for tonight. I will, make, I will accept the motion to adjourn. Will we adjourn? Second. Second. Right. Second. 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 All in favor of adjourning, say aye. Aye. All opposed, say nay. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes do have it. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Look forward to seeing you next year.
Please don't get to vote tomorrow.